I'm Ed Martin, president of the Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, and I'm back again. I, I hope you'll please visit realmrsamerica.com and subscribe right down here and share and like this video so other people can find out the real truth, the real Mrs. America, not what Mrs. America has been pushing. $50 million production. It played all over America. Now it's over in the UK playing right about now. Well, you know, Dobby Waller, who's one of the executive producers on Mrs. America, and Kate Blanchett, the star and one of the executive producers, both, they started promoting Mrs. America, that their, their series, and they kept promising early on, we want to be fair to both sides. That's what they said. Well, something seems to have changed now, and uh, in the writing of Mrs. America, as well as in the post-production interviews, we see a very different tune. Let's find out exactly what happened. Well, you know, in an interview with Britain's Jewish News, which is a newspaper as well as an online presence, executive producer Dobby Waller asks the question, quote, what woman would oppose women's rights, end quote. Well, it's not a totally unfair question, especially since she's asking it. But, you know, Phyllis Schlafly asked a very similar question, very famously, in the 1972, the February 1972 Phyllis Schlafly report, a, a report that went out and was literally reproduced thousands and thousands of times as the definitive document fighting back against the ERA. Why? Because the title she used, it was this title, What's Wrong with Equal Rights for Women? And if Waller was being fair, like she said she wanted to be, and fair to both sides, she would have answered her question like Phyllis Schlafly did, with reasoned arguments that Phyllis laid out and others laid out at the time, and then showed both sides, the feminist side. But Waller didn't do that. She didn't want to do that. Well, why? It, it seems clear now that Waller didn't really want to be fair. That was lip service at the beginning of this uh, process. You know, instead of giving Phyllis's arguments any attention or putting them out there, Waller said this, quote, Phyllis and her army of homemakers were actually a very powerful cover for the patriarchy and the misogynists who never wanted to ratify the ERA, end quote. Waller produces no evidence of that, as we've said before, there were literally dozens of journalists back in the era of the fight over ERA who were investigating the people who were fighting for and against it and finding out who was funding it. Never has there been produced one bit of evidence to support that. So what is that? Well, it sounds like a slur. It sounds really mean. And it sounds like Waller thinks that Phyllis Schlafly and her band of homemakers and others were too dumb to make their own decisions. Is that what she means? You know, she's saying that Phyllis Schlafly, this iconic woman, couldn't be successful, successful on her own? It means Waller, she's just dropped down and in, into the misogynist notions that are fed throughout the culture. She's fallen for the, the ideas that she's supposed to oppose. You know, you have to go back, and if you go to phyllisschlafly.com or realmrsamerica.com, you'll see a lot of it. Phyllis Schlafly's writings, her speeches, her, her public presentations, extraordinarily gifted. At a very young age, she graduated with honors from Washington University, went to Harvard, received a master's degree. This is not someone who was controlled by anyone else. And to suggest Phyllis was controlled by men, no feminist has uh, ever found the evidence to support that. And it's a slur to say it now. You know, why is it, we should ask, is that, that Waller and Blanchett and others have suddenly decided to be open about their misogynistic and liberal bias. I mean, they're not hiding anymore that they want it to be fair. They're just saying that they're putting down Phyllis and, and complaining about Phyllis and slurring Phyllis. Why is it? Well, I think it comes down to just one word, and that word is Emmys. You see, the show's creators have to prove to the voters in the, in the Emmy nominations and in the Emmy process that they're liberal enough to get those awards. Hollywood's elites that vote for the Emmys and the voting starts in just a few weeks and the awards are later this uh, summer, actually early fall, they want to know that you're solidly liberal, that you're with them and you're not open to both sides. And everyone knows that. If you want to win Emmys, you got to be liberal. For the last two years, the show that has won the most Emmys, in fact, eight Emmys annually, which is a record, it's an all-time record, that's the marvelous Mrs. Maisel which of course is pretty liberal, but also they find a way in that show to take pot shots at Phyllis Schlafly every now and then. 
So clearly what's changed for, for Waller and for the others is that they want to win Emmys, and it's best to show your anti-Phyllis bona fides and bias if you can. As Mrs. America you know, has unve unveiled their liberal bias to snatch up these awards, we've had more and more work to do to fact check them. I, I thought when the series stopped rolling out at new episodes, maybe our fact checks would become less relevant. Well, they popped up even more. But here's the thing. If the feminists wish, and they may wish it, that Phyllis Schlafly was a puppet of some evil conspiracy, they need to accept these facts. And the facts you'll find at realmrsamerica.com. They got beat by a truly strong and powerful and smart woman named Phyllis Schlafly. She did that. Nobody else, no propped up uh, front person is silly. It's a crazy argument. Please go to Real Mrs. America, like this video and share it and subscribe down here. Spread the word. We continue to want to tell people the truth about the Real Mrs. America. And I think I'll have to talk to you soon. We've got more fact checks coming. So we'll talk to you then.